Good afternoon. We have three announcements today. Just a reminder that we are still collecting the rice bowls in the atrium. If you still have one of those that you've been using during Lent, if you could return it to the church. Uh, there are some baskets out on the table as you exit the center door here. We've been doing very well with that, so we thank you for your generosity to that program. Also, it's been a blessing as many members of our parish have been able to come back together once again and to participate in spiritual, social, educational, and various group activities. As we continue to offer opportunities, we're interested in hearing ideas and suggestions from the youngest members of our community on events and programs with families in mind. Next Sunday, April 23rd, after the 11 a.m. Mass, we invite families with young children through elementary age to meet in the atrium to share their thoughts and ideas about things that they would like to see take place at St. Edward's throughout the year. Children are welcome to attend. If you can't attend and would like to leave your thoughts and questions, we would ask that you contact Marianne in the parish office. You can do that by either leaving a message or uh, an email. And finally, this Wednesday evening from 5 to 7 p.m., we will be having a fun evening spreading mulch around the church grounds. <laughs> We know you all like flowers, and we know you like to garden. So if you would, could spare an hour or two, it would be a great help. They're planning on five to seven. We do have some tools, but if you would like to come and you have your own shovel, rake, or wheelbarrow, please feel free to bring them as well. And we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, you like the flowers, right? <laughs> Thank you. is risen to
We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. My sisters and brothers, as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us pause and open our hearts to the healing presence of the Lord. Lord Jesus, by your death and resurrection, you have given us life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the good shepherd who calls us to ministry. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are always with us to the end of time. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. 
awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to, one, to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth 
to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that's imperishable, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. And he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retained, they are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not there with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, I put my finger into those nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. And Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, 
Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written, written in his book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. When you think of the number of words that you use each day and every week, throughout the year, I would suggest that one of the easiest words is just a little monosyllable, two letters, simply no. How many times have you heard that? No. It can be said without much effort. You don't have to exercise many mouth muscles in order to say it, and there are many ways that it can come out of your mouth. It can be groaned out, it can be said with te teeth clenched, it can be repeated multiple times to emphasize objection or opposition. No, 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 remember that? <laughs> it was written Linda's little grandchild, <laughs> which was so cute when it happened. <laughs> or it can be just said once, and its meaning and its message can be clear enough. I'd like to suggest to you that the word no is a lot easier to say than the word yes. To say yes can make us feel vulnerable and our availability will be taken up by others. To say yes will require our submission as well as our obedience to our superiors or to a higher authority. And so the word yes is often said with a great deal of caution. And there will be implications, if you will, on our availability, our vulnerability, and our security. And so the easiest way out of any situation that we don't like or that we don't want to be involved in is simply to say no. It tends to shut the door to further conversation or discussion or negotiation or agreement. And so for Thomas, who was not with the disciples when the risen Lord appeared to them, his response to what they said about having seen the risen Lord is a straight and sharp no. And he showed how adamant he was when he said this. Unless I see the holes and the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. In short, it was no means no. But it was understandable why Thomas was so adamant. When he saw Jesus being nailed to the cross and then dying on it, it was a shocking no to him. He and all of the disciples basically said, no, it can't be. But it was. And then after that, with no hope left in him, he somehow decided it wasn't right or it didn't make a point to be with the disciples anymore. Maybe that's why he wasn't with the disciples on that first Easter Sunday night. For Thomas, 
He was like one big tied up knot. His mind, his heart, his life were tied up like a knot. And he had only one word to say to anyone or anything. And that word was simply no. But notice it's to just that type of resistance that Jesus appears again. And he comes to show his compassion and mercy to Thomas. With love, mercy, and compassion, Jesus turns that no into yes. And that yes from Thomas became a profound statement of faith. My Lord and my God. He makes the ultimate faith statement as he experiences this risen Lord. On this second Sunday of Easter, as we give thanks to God for his love, mercy, and compassion, I would invite you to surrender the no's, if you will, of your life. Those no's that have tied you up in many knots, knots of your mind, your heart, basically your life. Surrender them to the Lord. Sometimes there are big, tight knots of faith and they have resulted in our disobedience to God. There could be nights or knots in our relationships that have caused tension and friction. We've said no too many times that we are like a big no to God and others. But notice Jesus came for Thomas to untie the knots of his life and to change his no into a yes. And it was a resounding yes for Thomas as once again he proclaims, my Lord and my God. I would pray that throughout the rest of this Easter season, we reflect on how we are able not to say no to Jesus, but to say yes. I would offer a prayer you might reflect on in the days ahead. Oh God, please untie the knots that are in my mind, my heart, and my life. Remove the have-nots, the can-nots, and the do-nots that I have in my mind. Erase all the will-nots, might-nots, that may find a home in my heart. Release me from the could-nots and would-nots that obstruct my life. And most of all, O oh God, I ask that you remove from my mind, my heart, and my life all the am-nots that I have allowed to hold me back, especially the thought that I am not good enough. Amen. believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Casting doubt aside, we praise our Lord and God and humbly ask for the answer to our prayers and those of the whole world. Our response, risen Savior, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may offer an uncompromising witness to Christ by being united in mind and spirit as we worship, pray, study, and serve the needs of others. We pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For Christ's gift of peace to settle in the hearts of the entire human family around the world and guide all away from violence and revenge, especially in Ukraine and in the Middle East, along with the gun violence in our own land. We pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For all who doubt, who have lost their faith, that the divine mercy of the risen Savior transform their hearts and minds so that they may believe. We pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For all families and children to spend these Easter season days growing in faith and love, always learning from the following of the Lord more closely. We pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For all who have come into the church this Easter, that they may experience the divine mercy of Christ with each step they take. We pray. For the divine mercy of God to be showered upon all who are ill, who are hospitalized, those who suffer from addiction or mental illness, along with medical personnel and first responders. We pray. For Sister Bernadette Catelier, Teresa M. Tyrell, Garrett Metacarpa, Shana Mara, Elaine Kubek, Don McCafferty, Tom Going, and for our recently deceased, Nora Quigley that these and all who have gone before us in faith may rest in the loving and healing embrace of the Lord. We pray. And for those needs, we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Merciful God, you showed your everlasting love in Jesus, who died and rose from the dead for our sake. Hear our prayers this day, made always in the name of Jesus the Christ, our risen Lord, brother and Savior, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
my sisters and brothers pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that, renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to let to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks 
that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, the clergy, and all men and women who minister in your name. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Edward, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Happy are those called to be nourished at his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts as we open ourselves to your mercy and offer that mercy to all that we meet. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.